Hello again. Uh, in addition to having to go and restore my OBS settings, thankfully there was a backup I could use. Apparently my graphics settings in the Talos Crucible 2 were also reset, <laughs> so this game can just randomly decide to reset your graphics options for some reason. I'll have to double check that every time now, I guess. I don't know, maybe, maybe they'll patch that or something, but that's, that's probably why the performance was struggling so much yesterday. Let's just double check. Video. And, uh, yeah, now these are all properly as they should be. Well. Oh yes, this is, this is running much more nicely. Or at least it feels like it is. Hello, you weren't here earlier. Didn't I talk to you earlier? 1k, what's up? Yes, I did talk to you already. Okay. So I guess I just wander around analyzing things. Makes sense. Six is blinking at us in this direction, apparently. Uh, where exactly in this direction, though? Another thing is, uh, that structure that appeared before I went on the tramway or whatever... It looked like it was up on a hill that I couldn't access, so that's why I didn't explore it right away. I was actually trying to explore it, but then the cutscene started because I got close to the entrance of the tramway. And, uh, you know, ADHD moment got distracted. But I don't think I would have been able to get there anyway. Also, I turned down the, the game volume a bit in OBS, so hopefully my voice isn't drowned out by the game music and such anymore. If you want to hear the game audio at full volume, you can buy the game and play it yourself. I encourage it. Okay, so we're still going to the correct direction, it seems. What's that? It kind of reminds me of something from Numa Breath of Life. But I'm pretty sure it's unrelated. Yep, this is six behind us. I don't remember how many we needed to get the gate open that was over here somewhere. Probably follow this spark and see. Like, it probably wants all eight. But I just want to double check, you know? Because maybe it'll open a bit earlier than expected. Alternatives. I meant to right-click that. Oopsie whoopsie. I need both here. <laughs> See, the problem is... If I try and connect this red one to that, it's going to cut off... Oh wait, that's also red, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well, it's gonna cut off the green, though. That's- that's the main problem, actually. Hm. We don't need the blue, because we can- we can create blue by doing this. Then... Oh, well, then now we can just create red. Yeah, that works. Yep, there we go. Solid solution. Well done. Yes, we get to hear an extended version of this music. Because this one's so far away. Where is this one going? Did we really go this far? What? Did it go through here? Did I look at that wrong? Uh, excuse me? It's over here somewhere, right?
Okay. I guess it went through the wall. Or it went around a corner that I didn't notice. Yeah, so it does want all eight. So we'll come back here after we follow the signs. Get where we're wanting, get where we're wanting to go. So seven is in this direction. Yeah, the performance is much better now that I have the graphic settings set properly again. Rasir from Lives of the First Companions by Randolph. Right, that, that reminds me, there was something I was thinking about last night as I was laying in bed. Uh, how many companions were there of the first companions? Because I thought one of these... I can't view it right now. Uh, one moment. Oops. Is it in research? I thought I thought at the beginning of the game it said there were ten, but then I thought I saw something else that said twelve. But I might just be misremembering. Twelve of us. Yeah, it says right there, twelve of us. But at the beginning of the game, didn't they say that it was Athena and ten others, or that it was ten total, including Athena? So, is that a discrepancy, or am I misremembering things? Uh-oh. Can I not go that far back in the log? Does it not- does it not show me the stuff that happened at the beginning of the game now? That's annoying. Oh well. I hope there's more stuff in here to check out. Uh, yeah, I'll do that after I read this. Lifthrazir, from the Lives of the First Companions by Randolph. Lifthrazir is perhaps the most mysterious of the First Companions, a wanderer and a mystic by nature. He would venture far from New Jerusalem on his own, recording his thoughts as he explored harsh and distant lands. These recordings garnered him a group of devoted followers to whom he tried to impart his wisdom. Why is there just randomly some numbers right after wisdom? Is this corrupted? I mean, that's another thing, is all these structures and puzzles and such, I have a feeling that they were built by Athena and the and some of the other people who went with her, right? Because it's it's said that there's been centuries passing while they've been trying to get to a total of a thousand people, right? So they would have had time to build all this. In the troubled time following the Founder's disappearance, Lifthazir and his disciples set out on a journey to reach the opposite end of the world by foot. They have not been heard from since. Uh, what do you mean by opposite end of the world? I thought they would have known it's a globe, right? <laughs> Did they just want to be on the exact opposite side of the Earth? I suppose so. There is a pleasure in arriving on this island. The pleasure of being the first to step foot here in hundreds of years. It is a genuine pleasure didn't the guy that we talked to last time also talk about enjoying exploring because he likes the idea of being the first person there? That's that's not something I enjoy about exploring, but it's interesting that two characters now have both shared that same sentiment about exploring. And yet, it is also banal. My presence here is of no more significance than that of every other animal. These rocks do not care who walks here. And the millennia between the presence of our ancestors and my brief journey are nothing to them. But even putting it this way is wrong. It is not that the rocks do not care. It is that in some sense they do not exist. I may stand in awe of the cliffs on the southern coast, but the cliffs cannot look back at me with contempt. They cannot do anything at all.
Okay, so this is eight, which means... Let's look at the sign, actually. Okay, I guess seven is in this direction somewhere. You know, I, I'm just now noticing that the compass at the top of the screen gives us a sort of indicator of where everything is. I remember mentioning that in the, the first episode of the livestream, episode zero. I guess seven is up here somewhere. In that direction. These are really spread out and far apart from each other, aren't they? Yeah, here we go. This is seven. Self-sufficiency. Uh-huh. Hoping for. Yeah, that should work. Wee! <laughs> I like this one. It kind of reminds me of one of the ones from Road to Gehenna in the desert area. you just upload? A photo? I mean, technically you're right, but... Is that? I can't tell what that is. How did you even manage? You're, you're literally taking a picture with your eyes, Melvo. I, I don't even know how to make my eyes go out of focus. Clearly you've never listened to one of Herman's speeches. Some of us are busy doing actual science, not just sightseeing. Thank you. I guess that's experimenting with uh, how the, the eyes focus, because like this is more in focus and this is more out of focus. Let's look at some of these other ones. Yeah, this is the conversation that we had already last episode. Not sure what to call this thing. Bridge ring, bridge machine, anyway, it's a device that takes particle clouds released by the puzzles and turns them into bridges made out of tetraminos. Or tetraminos, I guess is how he pronounced it. Directly assembling a bridge out of eight particle clouds is required to reach the tower. So clearly, another layer of puzzles. Simulation had tetromino puzzles too, although in a different form. Could their presence here be symbolic? I don't have a clue. It seems that each of the structures on the island, with the exception of the megastructure itself, is surrounded by a cluster of puzzles resembling those found in the simulation and in our booting sequence. Completing a puzzle releases a particle cloud which then autonomously flies into the device that assembles tetraminos. The puzzles even come with tiles, sorry, titles, hijacking the vestigial code designed to display puzzle names in the simulation. It's unclear whether this represents a potential security issue. <laughs> yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> but the matter should be given consideration. Yeah, that's, that's the security issue if ever I've seen one. You know, just being able to show text in somebody's vision whether they want it or not. There's an ambition expressed by this building, a sense of purpose, that I find really admirable. It is big, but also intricate, detailed. I had to sneeze. That feels like a statement, uh, not the sneezing. We should explore this building as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I am curious, has anyone actually met 1K? By the Founder's Pistons, I hope he's interested in mechanical engineering or something. Oh, I guess 1K already has a gender assigned. We desperately need more people to keep the city functional, so we don't have to rely on Melville to repair the stuff that Pellegrino fixes. Hey! Remember when you fixed the door to the mayor's office? How long was Herman stuck in there? 
You trap one mayor in his office for a week and you're marked for life. <laughs> I hope he's an artist, so we really need new stories, new ideas to lift our spirits. You know, if we just kept growing, we wouldn't have to worry about this. We wouldn't have to imprison poor 1K in a cage of expectations. 1K will be whatever the progenitor intended him to be and whatever the founder foresaw when she established the goal. He's polite and really interested in history, which is an excellent start. I'm not going to name names, but some of you were a lot less impressive. <laughs> There's lots of different options here. So, one K found a recording of Lysus here, and what an odd recording too. I know he's one of the first companions, but I don't actually know that much else about him. Don't think I've ever seen him around either. Can someone explain? Lifthrazir always had an unusual perspective, even in the very beginning. He traveled a lot, sometimes leaving for years. He built a kind of mobile recharging station so he didn't need to come back to the city as often, although it was quite risky as the solar panels had a tendency to break rather quickly. But he had no problem taking risks if he felt they were necessary, and exploration was necessary to him. Lefzazir would record his thoughts as he explored, and then publish them when he returned. Over the centuries, he accumulated a group of admirers, or disciples if you prefer. In the period of crisis surrounding Asina's disappearance, they left the city, headed into the unknown, and we haven't heard from them since. Interesting. I do want to say that uh, I am intentionally not selecting all possible dialogue options and interactions with people because I think it's kind of rude to just bombard people with questions, you know? <laughs> I don't know if the game cares, really. Like, maybe it's just free to talk to them as much as you want and it won't bother them, but I, uh, I just like to be more polite. I mean, mainly when they say they're busy. Like, obviously, if they've got nothing to do, then talking to them is probably fun for them, obviously. But, you know, I've, I've been told by at least a couple NPCs that they were busy in trying to get stuff done, so I didn't want to hold them. Just put this here for now. What's this about? I guess we need a box in here? There's a box right there. There's a blue laser there. A red laser here. Hmm. Alright, well, let's take this out. We're gonna swap places with this. Do that for now. Well, that's an interesting thing to notice that... You can just connect this to one thing without finishing the other connections. And it still creates the laser, which can be used to block other lasers. So that's something we'll have to keep in mind. There were some puzzles like that in uh, Road to Gehenna. I think the hardest puzzles when you had the free admin. And I think there were some also some community maps that I played that were like that. I wonder if they'll have that at all in this game. So let's let's take this one out. go. So we have this now. I guess we want it to hit that? Will it go high enough, though? That's the question. I mean, I guess I could have tested how high it'll go. I can do that right now, actually. Oh, right, it also needs... Yeah, okay, that, that, make, that makes sense. So we actually can't really test it just yet. Uh, I'll just connect everything up in advance. Connect that. Connect that. And, uh... Ooh. Let's just put that there temporarily. Then we'll have to stand on this. Oh yeah, that goes high enough. There we go. Oh, hmm. 
Oh, I bet I'm supposed to connect that to that, so that I can use this connector to pull green from it to go there. Okay. Well, that's an easy fix. Um, right, I do need to bootstrap it though. Oh, look at that. They, they meet as green in the middle. How does it decide which to accept as inputs versus outputs in that case? Because I guess it's based on distance, because this is a distance of zero. It's connected directly to it. And this is a distance of one, because it's got an interim. But then the, the split is happening here, not here, which would be halfway. Interesting. I mean, I guess, I guess it makes sense to be here, because this is also... A distance of of one because this is also an interim. But I guess it does make sense that the split would happen here. Very interesting. Anyway, we solved it now. The bridge ring seems to be fully charged now. Try accessing the tower, 1K. It seems to be fully charged now, you say? But uh, I haven't even gotten there, and neither has this thing. Are you sure about that? Doesn't look fully charged to me. That dialogue came a little bit early. Whoa. Excuse me? Hello? Oh no. So, uh. Okay then. Enough, right? I don't know if this is relevant, but St. Edwald believed that Tetrominoes represented the name of God, and God's ability to reshape the world. True, but he was also mad as a hatter. One man's madness is another man's genius. Hmm. Go. That works. I might be missing things that those sound effects are happening with. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly necessary to have tetraminos for this. Ooh. I guess we need to start with this one, maybe? And then... Yeah, that's not gonna work. Need it the other way. There we go. When I was booting up, I was terrible at the Tetromino Arrangers. Those were actually the only ones I was good at. What? I'm just saying. I want to go back and look at the sign again before proceeding, just to see if there's anything else on it, like secrets or such. Because I'm pretty sure this is demarcated by the gate symbol on the sign. Oh no, the gate is something else. Really? What are these icons? So all the puzzles we've solved... Okay, so this is a separate symbol from the gate. Okay. Yeah, so these are all turned off now, but there's still some stuff to find. So I'm guessing these are the... Either the hit system, or the secrets that can be discovered by exploring. Hmm... I want to see what this gate is about. And then there's... Well, we've got to do some exploring, I suppose. You got anything new to say? Hey 1K, what's up? 
Yep. You still got the same options. Still going in the right direction. Obviously, won't tell me where the secret or hint things are, whatever they are. So this must be what the gate is on the map. Another set of golden gates. These must be connected to the ones near the megastructure. There was a harder set of puzzles in the simulation, right? And maybe they're like that. I know one case probably like, Yay, harder puzzles! But to me, <laughs> that sounds like error code 704. No thanks. Looks like there is an additional set of puzzles connected by golden gates that can't be accessed yet. Assuming there is some kind of logical pattern to all this, those gates will probably open up once the correct conditions are met. Does this mean solving all the other puzzles or maybe something else as well? Hard to know at this point, so perhaps something we should prioritize much later. Okay, I will take the hint game. But I still want to see if I can find whatever these other symbols are. These triangles. Is that an indicator of what they look like? Maybe it's a triangle part of the circle thing? Because there's... Because there's, this had the, the circle motif. And this triangle is also part of this motif, right? Maybe that's related? And there's circles here. They want me to enter the tower, and maybe there's stuff there, but I, I'm curious to continue exploring this area a bit more. You can feel free to skip ahead in the episode if you already know that there's nothing. I see a question mark on the map, right? On the compass at the top of the screen, there's a question mark there. Is that a hint of where it's located, or...? There's two question marks. Oh, there's a third question mark. Okay, so... It might be... Like, the question mark could be... That and also something else that I haven't discovered yet. Let's just head to where the question marks are. Oh yeah, there's a path back here. Oh, look at that! Look at that! And the icon has changed on the compass, too. Wait, is this song just one of the songs that plays and was coincidental? It's strange that some of these puzzles seem disconnected from the rest. Like it's all... unfinished. Or still evolving. Hmm... I guess we don't need that anymore, actually. Uh... We have a red emitter there, a blue emitter there, so we can... Yeah, I think I need to swap places with these guys. These gals, with these ungendered non binary pals. What? Where did my. Oh, there it is. Okay. This gives us two more connectors to work with. Oh no. Hmm. Is that- is that a problem, though? Hmm... Might have to go a long way around now. That's probably what that back area is for.
Okay, this needs to be on the button, I think. I think I'm gonna have to do something... ...like this. Yeah, that connects. I can take this one... ...and get a nice angle here. And there's no other way to open this, so... I think that's how it has to be. Oh, and then, uh... Yeah, I can go around it like this. Oops. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Did it! It is always quite loud when that happens. Oh wait, do I need to take something here? Oh, so nothing pops out. Okay. Well. Let us continue exploring. There seems to be... Nothing in this direction on the compass, at least. Yeah, and it seems like there's an impassable wall here that they don't want us to climb up. Oh yeah, this is- this is video game communication for do not go this way. <laughs> a very obviously climbable wall that the game does not let you climb and it's city to slide down. That means do not go there. So there's another question mark here somewhere. Two question marks in this direction, actually. One closer. Interesting monument. Decorative for another puzzle. Aperture Science Personality Core? So there's a question mark in that direction. This place looks like it was designed... ...to move water around, doesn't it? Like, that seems like where a waterfall might come from. What that's about. And that too. Then again, it could just have no meaning. It could just be aesthetically pleasing. Or it could be an air vent or something. Or it could be... A way to shoot energy signals of some sort. Focus beams. There's lots of different possibilities. Oh! Frogs! There's something over here for sure. But it's not on a compass. That kind of looks like a dragon, doesn't it? Or a dragon head? You know, with antlers, snout, and there's a little tooth down there. And the eyes right there, another eye right there. Yeah, that is not on the map. But it is something that, that can be found. I wonder if that's the hint system in play.
interesting music. I can sprint straight, that's nice. Thank you for waiting for me, I appreciate it. Really? What are we doing right now? We're just chasing a nano machine swarm. There's another one of those monuments. Oh. Chasing the light. Leap of fire. Not all things must be balanced. When good is weighed against evil, tip the scale. I think that was more like a recording. The entity didn't appear, and the system didn't react either. Stars. Another reflection of the simulation. Really? Stars? You think that's the star? I thought this is the hint system. I thought the triangle thing was the star equivalent. Some of the puzzles seem to be disconnected from the rest. They're still functional and can be used to power the bridge device, which means it should be possible to reach the tower without solving every main puzzle. They don't seem to be properly integrated. Could they be remnants from a previous iteration of the design? Ooh, so they're just like bonus puzzles that if you get stuck on a main puzzle, you can solve one of these instead. Alright. Well then I don't know... So did they combine stars and hints system into one thing? Because I guess the stars did eventually get you hints in the base game of Talos 1, right? I've discovered what seems like another mystery to solve, stars, clearly inspired by the simulation which are gained by solving puzzles related to these monuments to Pandora, Prometheus, and the Sphinx. Perhaps these stars are somehow related to what Yakut dubbed the Astronomical Temple. Interesting. So whenever we see a monument like this, we know that there's one to chase after. I think this is the only one I've seen though, unless there's another one that I forgot about. Let's see, there's, uh, looking at the compass at the top of the screen here. There's a question mark in that direction, and a question mark in that direction. But again, this one that we chased was not on the compass at all. It was just something you had to explore for and see. Hmm. Well, let's explore a bit in this area where there's nothing on the compass, and then we'll go towards those question marks. We still have third-person view in, in this quote-unquote real world, which is interesting. I guess that's just a gameplay convenience for players who prefer playing in third-person. Yeah, on the other side I could climb up this, but on this side I can't. What gives, game? They didn't want me to try and jump over that wall, huh? Is that... 
these vines are not aligned with the concrete because that because of my graphics settings, or is that just a bug in the game? <laughs> Alright, well, there's nothing over here, so let's go explore the question marks, I suppose. Like, one of them's closer to the other. And closer than the other, I meant to say. There's stuff over there, but I guess we'll be going there via a tram. Is there a super speed option in this game, actually? Like, uh... I doubt they would have a recording mechanic unless they use the partners... Or, uh... turning keys... Ah, uh, well, I don't see it yet. Because in the first game, you could bind a key to, uh, to go super speed, basically, and fast-forward the gameplay entirely. And that was useful for the recording puzzles, where you had to record versions of yourself to then work with. You know, like thinking with Time Machine and all that. Oh, hello. Yes? Founders Pistons. You want my autobiography now? Fine. I'm one of New Jerusalem's chief engineers. I'm in charge of city maintenance and power management. I'm old as dirt, although not quite as old as that fossil Byron. In short, old Grumpy, keep stuff running. Hobbies? You think I have time for hobbies? That's cute. If I had time for hobbies, all of you would be dead. What do you want me to say? I like bubble baths, candy, and the concept of Tuesdays. <laughs> Cities don't maintain themselves. You are if quite you don't devoted. If you put real effort into keeping stuff running, it all falls apart in just a few decades. Civilization is always on the brink of collapse unless we do something about it. And I do. Yep, that's the truth. This is very similar to the structure where you found the schematics. Yep, it is. Check out the terminals. Maybe there's something that'll help us understand who built this place. They have to have left something behind. Ooh. What do we have here? Oh, yes, this is the hole cutter. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but uh, we've seen that in... Uh, the trailers and screenshots. <laughs> Hello year event. A killer year a ridification event from BT Old Campbell's Anthropocene Dilemmas. The Akkadian Empire, forged in violence by Sargon the Great and his sons, reigned supreme over the city-states of Old Sumer. Enriched by trade with distant lands, Fed by the plentiful wheat fields of Mesopotamia, the Empire bestrode the world with confidence and pride. Who could oppose the Chosen of Anu and Enil, the masters of the four quarters of the world? I really mispronounced Elil, or Enlil. <laughs> then the weather changed. The crops stopped growing. Trade collapsed. The Empire fell, its capital forgotten. The most likely culprit at the time of writing is the 4.2 kilo year aridification event, the beginning of the Mechalayan Age, a non-anthropogenic drought that may have lasted almost two centuries, causing many of the earliest civilizations around the planet to collapse. This is where our ordinary understanding of time, measured on the small scales of human history, collides with the reality of deep time and our existence within a much bigger picture. We live on a changing planet in a changing universe. Climatic optimums are temporary. Extinction is the norm. The Akkadians, like the more egalitarian habits of the Nisvalis civilization, could not understand why the rivers dried out and why the rains stopped coming. Even if they could, they lacked the tools to do something about it. 
a few short millennia later, we are on the brink of having that understanding and those tools. What can we learn from the tragedies of the past? There's an error at the bottom here. One such drought, completely naturogenic, would be enough to wipe out New Jerusalem for good. Is error the name of the person, or is it an actual error? Hmm. First Companions. When the Founder awoke, leaving the garden behind forever, there were two more whose bodies had been anointed by the pro progenitor. The gold disc breathed life into them, and their names were Eustathius and Cornelius. The Founder showed them all she had discovered. Together, they explored the dead city and saw the ruin to which humankind had fallen. It was then that the Founder understood that the sins of the past must not be repeated, and that only through humility could the future be saved. Aside from Cornelius and Eustathius, there were ten whose bodies the progenitor had not anointed in due time. Okay, so this is the 10 versus 12 thing that I was talking about earlier. This is the answer to that, I guess. Now it was upon the Founder to complete this work and begin the resurrection. In this matter, Cornelius proved of great assistance. After many tribulations, the ten were brought to life, and these twelve that were born after the Founder are called the First Companions. These are their names. Eustathius, Cornelius, Aurora, Sun, Sarabhai, Byron, Olampus, Yemo, Hypatia, or Hypatia, Nyam. I'm definitely not pronouncing that correctly. Benaroya, and Lithazir. It's funny how you can take something that's 90% true and 10% false and create something that's 100% misleading. Yep. Trials, base camp established. New version deployed, test the core functionality, so far so good. Version 4 failed, unknown error in calculations. Better cooling system necessary. <laughs> what is that? Circular structure. Decorative art, I suppose. Hmm. Certainly a pretty aesthetic. Brutalism, but artistic. <laughs> well, not necessarily brutalism, I suppose. It's just a whole bunch of concrete. Here we go. Another bonus puzzle. Elevation. This looks like one of those things you'd see inside of uh, a company property, you know, like a restaurant or a storefront, that lets you measure the height of people on cameras. Sneeze again. Alright, so this is our ultimate goal here. Well, we can get in from this side, but there's a fizzler in the way. Hmm, interesting. What was the requirement for opening this again? Oh, it's on the inside, okay. So that's the requirement there. Might as well just connect that up. And we'll put this in a nice, convenient place to be accessed from both angles, I suppose. I'm gonna want something on the box because of the title of the puzzle, you know. Yeah, that's, uh, oops. That's not what I wanted to connect it to. There we go. 
Oh yeah, we need red anyway. Can we connect it from here? Ooh, hmm. I'm gonna have to move it. But yes. Yep, that still works. You can still get lasers through fizzlers. Okay, so this is open, but... That's not particularly helpful, is it? We haven't used that. Oh, I'm- I'm massively overcomplicating this, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that'd do it. Right, what color do we need? Blue. We have red and green right here. Well... Oh, yeah, bootstrapped. Ooh, but yes, this is the issue. Oh, I can just take the box now, because we don't need that there anymore. And... Ta-da! One case solved all the puzzles in this area, but nothing happened. There was a brief blip in the system, though. Maybe it'll do something later. There has to be some sort of point. I don't remember a spark coming out of the other one. What's this I'm going to? Oh, that's what this is for. Okay, so when we do the triangles, they go to this, I suppose. Alright, there was another question mark somewhere, right? No? Did I get all the question marks in the compass? Uh, I guess I did. Well, I suppose we should head towards the tower. I don't think I've seen another one of those sh shrines around for you. How do I get to you? Oh, they're gonna make me go all the way around to get there. What? How did I? Hmm. I guess I have to take the stairs to that puzzle there. How did I miss that? Was that there always? And I just didn't look at it? Wait, that's a different thing? What did I just collect? Excuse me? Huh? I still have one out of two stars. Yeah, that would main puzzles, 2 2 lost puzzles. Gold puzzles, I guess we can't do yet. Lost labs. And now there's a fire symbol? Do I just need to take it over to the monument here, or do I need to take it somewhere else? I mean, if you look at the top left of the screen, I have 1x fire symbol and 1x star. Did I pick up the fire? What What do I do with this? Oh, these are... Excuse me? This is strange. Oh, I'm... I'm a... I'm going up entirely the wrong way.
Where do I take this exactly? What do I do with this fire that I've been given? Wait, is this for the hint system? This fire might be for the hint system, actually. Uh, I guess I need to check in a puzzle to find out. Or maybe it'll just complain that I've already solved the puzzle, so... <laughs> oh, wouldn't hurt to check. Okay, I guess I won't be able to check right now. Well, tower it is then. Next episode. Thank you for watching.